Hi everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope everybody's enjoying my videos. I hope that everybody's learning things. Today we're going to talk about something um, a little bit different. A lot of people want to know how old is my clock? How old? How old is my clock when there's no information out there? Uh, that's a good question. There are certain people that can uh, uh, tell by the looks of the clock that can give you a rough estimate on when it was made but i want to um, discuss something a little bit different um, my group expert valentin weber uh, he could tell me how old the clock is and give me a rough estimate uh, just by looking at the clock because he is German, lives in Germany, goes around to all the museums, has seen all the uh, antique clocks. They have placards of when the clock was made. Uh, he has several clocks himself. His friends got several clocks. They know when the clock was made. So he could give you a rough, rough estimate just by looking at the clock. I can't. I'm not an expert on dating a clock's age. I have a, a rough ideal, but I'm not an expert. But let's discuss something that I think that you can get a rough estimate on a clock's age. So um, as you can see, I'm wearing a shirt that Seth Lingenfelter made for me, designed with a little bit of my inputs. It's a Munderland thing. I don't have to explain it to you. Seth Lingenfelter makes all my shirts that I, I wear. Uh, clock shirts, Munderland shirts. And so uh, I will leave a link in the description of this video for Seth Lingenfelter. You can uh, contact him and ask him to de design your shirt. He sells them on Red Redbubble. He doesn't make a lot of money, uh, but y you can purchase shirts that he's already designed. I will leave a link at the end of this uh, video to his YouTube channel. Um, that, that nothing else. Please subscribe to his channel. He makes professional videos, unlike my videos. I, I try to get information out as quickly as possible, and I'm not a professional when it comes to editing and, and making the videos. I just, uh, I'm lucky to get a video out. So uh, kick back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab something to smoke if you choose to do so, and uh, let's learn things. And please leave me comments, and give me a thumbs up, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, Regula, or Regula, is the Joseph Burger's uh, trademark, and he's the one that created the uh, uh, movements and the trademark Regula, Regula. In 1970, they started a, a date code. It could be letter A is 1970, B is 1971, and certain letters were not used, but the, um, the every 20 years, it, it started all over again. So 1970 is A, 1990 is A, 2010 is A, 2030 is A, etc. They also used a two-digit year if they didn't use the letters. So in 1970, it would show 25-70. Now you can find this information in the Cuckoo Clock Repair Manual books also. But this is off the NAWCC webpage. Here's the Regula movement. Here it says A- 25 
A is the type of movement it is. Um, sorry. 25 identifies it as a one-day movement. A is the type of one-day movement it is. And then it has dash 83, meaning this movement was made in 1983. And this was who it was made for. But Herbert Herr didn't use the day code. AMC, uh, Badoff, they didn't use day codes. And so uh, you you got to kind of go by other things. Uh, there's uh, another NAWC posting where I asked the question when they quit using count wheels. And their answer was there's no particular date but by 1955, all manufacturers had quit using count wheels. And so um, in the 50s, they were still using count wheels. Not all manufacturers, but again, this is a Herbert Herr 1950s count wheel. If there's no date code, and if it doesn't have DRGM or some other um, ANG, ANGM, I believe, or DRGM, is, which is a cheap patent code, those were from the 50s. So if it doesn't have DRGM... I, I, I take that back. The, the The last time they quit using those were in the 50s. So if it doesn't have DRGM or ANGM, and if it doesn't have a day code, it means the movement was made in the 60s. So regula, regula, however you want to pronounce it, started using a day code in 1970. Herbert Herr didn't, didn't use a day code. The other manufacturers didn't use day code, except for shots. Shots, movements have a date, but they basically made shots in 1950s. Shots, I believe, had two different types of movements, uh, shots 49 and shots 50. It's a Herbert Herr movement. Now, Herbert Herr used thicker plates than Regula. Uh, um, this is a rack and snail movement. You can tell it's a Herbert Herr because of this system right here that's common for Herbert Herr and this lever, plus the fact that it says Herbert Herr, Tribeck, Germany. This movement is a little bit thicker. 1.2, 1.3. Again, these are cheap scales, so you have to measure them a few times. 1.3, but it's Herbert Herr. And because it's tracking snails, it's 50, 60s time frame. And I can't uh, not mention Lux. It's a Lux, manufactured by the Lux Manufacturing Company, Waterbury, Connecticut. This movement thickness is 1.2 millimeters thick, 1.3. I know exactly when this movement was made because of this webpage. 1940. So again, 1.2, 1.3, the 1940s, um, the, um, and then in the 1950s, 1.5, um, this is probably in the late 40s, and, um, but thinner plates, 
the bridge and crutch assembly is removable. These were uh, still stamped plates. I'm pretty, pretty certain they're not cast plates. This is my George Cool Cuckoo Quail Clock. And I know that this clock, or I take that back, I have a roundabout ideal of when this clock was made. It has the, the markings on the dial that says Made in Germany, Cool Clock Company, Chicago, Illinois. Which the NAWCC says that was only marked for clocks that were made in 1908 or earlier, even though there is some question to that. However, the point that I want to get across, taking a digital caliper, The plates measure between 3.1 and 3.5 millimeters in diameter. I feel that by measuring the thickness of the plates, you can narrow it down to when the clock was made. My Herbert Herr clock which only uh, cuckoo coil clock which only which cuckoos on both the hour and the half hour and i know is made in the 50s has plate thickness of 1.5 millimeters on my clock on both doors there are no dates penciled in and there's two of the group members' clocks who have a, a, a same cuckoo clock that their doors have uh, pencil markings of like 1912. And their dial has made in Germany, cool clock company, Chicago, Illinois on the dial. But this clock, there is no dates on the doors. My clock has got bellow, uh, trapezoid bellows. As you can see, their clock doesn't. There's a lot of room in my clock. My clock has got a double gong on it. And no, that hole is not original. I made it. This is an older Herber Her cuckoo quail clock. The plate thickness is three millimeters thick. It cuckoos only on the hour. The gong, it only has one single gong versus two. I still need to clean this thing up. There's all kinds of oil and crap all over it, but it works and I've got uh, plenty of other things to do. The bellows are not trapezoid. Because of the thickness of the plates, I'm gonna say that this clock was made prior to World War I. Um, so um, again, the plate thickness, in my opinion, is going to help determine the age of your clock. The 
bridge and crutch assembly can be taken out separately because of this. It's a Lear style movement. It is a cast mode movement. And this is that same Herbert Her cuckoo coil. You will notice it did not cuckoo on the half hour. those thick plates and let's go to the next clock this is a George cool cuckoo clock the thickness of these plates is 3.5 millimeters and it's just thick and again it has the 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 extra bridge to remove the birch and crutch assembly so you could take it out separately there is no markings on this door and there is some markings on this door but I've never been able to read what it says it's more like scribbly pencil marks if I was to estimate this the age of this clock Based upon the thickness of the plates, again, I'm going to go with pre-World War One. This is that same George Cool cuckoo clock, 3.5 millimeter thickness plates. I got uh, I got something wrong with the hands. I'm gonna have to fix them. The um, I get questions all the time. How come the older antique clocks take heavier weights? It's because of the thickness of the plates. Even though they're 30-hour clocks. Uh, just somebody today was asking me how come his uh, antique cuckoo quail clock takes weights that are similar to AJ cuckoo clocks. It's because the thickness of the plates. His clock thickness plates were 3.5 millimeters thick. It takes heavier weights to operate the movement. Um, his Weights weighed uh, 845 uh, grams. I'm going to show you some more clocks, but I saw this one. I know the exact age of this clock movement. It is a, uh, a shot cuckoo clock movement, and they made cuckoo clocks in 1950. This movement is one millimeter, give or take, thick. If I can get my uh, 1.5 millimeter thick, 1950. Okay. My Herbert Her that I know was made in the 1950s is 1.5 millimeters thick. Modern day cuckoo clock movements are only one millimeter thick. And here's a one that needs that I've got taken apart. As you can see, it's about one millimeter thick. It's a stamp plate. Even though this is a stamp plate, it's still thicker, 1.5 millimeters thick. So, um, as time progressive, 
progresses, the thickness of the plates got thinner. And so that's why it doesn't take heavy or weights to operate them. And that's why um, bushings will wear out faster and stuff like that. This is my Alexander Fleeg clock. My group expert, Valentin Weber, has already told me it was made around 1880, 1890-ish. The plate thickness is 3.1, 3.2 millimeters thick. So, again, the older the movement, the thicker the plates. So if you are undecided on your age of your clock, you might try measuring the plates. This has got trapezoid bellows. As you can see, the trapezoid bellows, or bellows in general, the, the topper is away from the wall. Because if it was up close to the wall, it wouldn't work. I have to take this movement out anyway because the front part, which I can't get to by taking off the dial because there's only just a little bitty hole in it, the front part needs adjusted because the clock will st stop about five minutes till the hour when the clock goes into warning because the catch that comes off the minute wheel with center arbor, the two pins, is is too far apart. And so it's stopping the clock. I have to bend it some. And I should have uh, I should have put it on my stand before I put this thing back into the case and tested it, but I didn't. Uh, but anyway... Let's see if I could show you some more clocks. And you will notice that this clock movement has nuts on it. And again, my group expert said it was made before 1900. So, uh, um, I always thought that they started putting nuts on after 1900 and that they used pens prior to 1900. But this guy knows he sees more clocks than I will ever see. Uh, so I trust his judgment. I will say this. There's not a lot known about Alexander Bleig. Uh, some of the information um, refers to his clocks um, like Philip Hass and son, or Gordon Holler and son, or Beha, the quality of the clocks are comparable to their clocks. All I know is I love it. Here's another antique cuckoo clock. The thickness on these plates are 3.5 millimeters thick. There is no markings on the plate. As you can see, the verge and crutch assembly can be taken out separately. It does have nuts to hold the uh, movement together. The chains are brass chains. Just another clock that I have to uh, sit down and work on. I just got way too many clocks to work on. apologize for the lighting. I showed this uh, movement recently. This movement is designed to where you could, it's got four nuts at the top and four nuts at the bottom. It shows DRGM, which is a utility patent type thing. It's a cheap patent type thing. It was good for, uh, three years with additional three year for a total of six years i believe if my memory serves me right but um you can 
work on the time side you could take this back plate off just for the time side or you can take the back plate off just for the strike side but the movement again is about 3.5 3.3 millimeters thick trapezoid bellows um, I, I think the clock is made prior to 1900. I take that back. I know this clock was made in 1904. I showed you a picture of it in this remake of this 1904 catalog that came out. And yeah, I have to fix that. This clock made by father and son. And its plates are three, around three millimeters thick. And again, as you can see, the virgin crutch assembly is removable. Trapezoid bellows. Bone hands. And for the most clock, uh, most part, my clocks will sit and tick away. But I told you I had a pet raccoon, and it loved to climb up the chains. And so I got clocks like this that used to work. But now they have issues because a pet loved to climb up my clocks. Don't ever get a pet raccoon. Get rid of cats and dogs out of your house. They'll destroy your clocks. This is the movement for the Smeckenbecker Cuckoo Quail Clock that I'm working on. Around 2.5, 2.6. So, I'm going to get back to that. This is the movement for the musical cuckoo clock that I'm working on. And again, it has the removable burge assembly. We're looking at 1.7 because it has removable burge assembly I'm going to say it was made in the 40s but the uh, colors for that clock are were common for the 50s so very well because again the thickness of the plates or or close to the thickness of the plates for the plates that I showed you from the 50s. This is the Herbert Herr cuckoo clock, cuckoo coil clock that doesn't have a removable burge assembly. It cuckoos on the hour and the half hour and the thickness of these plates are around 1.5. 1950s. The musical cuckoo clock could be from the late 40s, early 50s. I know this Herbert Herr is from the 1950s. This Meckenbecker cuckoo clock, cuckoo quail clock, because it will cuckoo on only the hour and because the plates are around 2.0 2.2 something like that i'm going to go with around the 1930s um and it has the removable burge assembly on it so my point to this video is I wish they would have uh, put dates and their names of who made these clocks 
on the movements or on the cases. But if you don't have the maker's name and if you don't know when it was made, there are some things that you can do to get a good idea of when it was made. You can watch a video on um, on YouTube where this uh, German cuckoo clock manufacturing company is driving and picking up different parts from different places. They pick up the movements from this uh, uh, newer video, so it's a regular movement. So they pick up the regular movement from Joseph Berger's um, um, family's company, um, trademark of regu regula, regula, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. And then they will pick up the dials from someplace else and they pick up this part from someplace else and pick up this part from someplace else. And um, there are comments that you could find in uh, the history of uh, Emil Schmeckenbecker. Uh, this one guy says back during that time frame, uh, certain people made different parts. And so um, I I know Regula, that's where Joseph Berger's family made their money, is making movements. Herbert Herr made their own movements uh, um, for the most part. Sometimes they used Regula. Um, whether it was the actual company of Herbert Herr or whether it was their friend next door that their only job was to make movements, I don't know. And so uh, um, some people think that certain makers use different movements uh, that were made by other people. Other people think that those makers made their own movements. Um, I, again, I wish there was more information out there. But I hope you all like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. And may God bless each and every one of you. This is uh, my buddy Mark... Um, uh, cuckoo coil cloth that he just purchased. The thickness of the plates are around 3.5 millimeters thick. It does have the removable birch assembly. The quail, sorry, the cuckoo only cuckoos on the hour. Uh, I got another video. Stand by and let me show it to you. This is the uh, clock itself. He still has to order bellow tops for it. Instead of repairing the bellows, he's going to order bellow tops. The reason why he has to open up the door for the quail is because the quail is tilted up in the air, his nose is sticking up in the air and it's preventing it from coming off the door. Uh, easy fix. But, you know, he only paid $50 for this cuckoo coil clock. He, I think he did great for something that was made, in my opinion, pre-World War One.